first thing I do when I begin all my paintings is grind my black ink. So this is an ink stone and I've put some water on it and I'll take one of my ink sticks like this. All of my ink sticks are broken, but this is an ink stick. And all you do is you, this is smooth, but it's called grinding ink. So I just rub it around like this and it makes black ink. Now I can, I can make my black ink lighter, but I can't make it darker. So I want to get it pretty black before I quit grinding my ink. And I usually do this a couple of minutes. And I just keep testing it to see how black it is. And so I'll get one of my napkins to test it on. And, and uh, when I think it's black enough, then we can, we can start. So all of the black ink on all of the paintings in my gallery, the ink starts this way. This is very therapeutic for me to begin by grinding my ink like this. Put my feet flat on the floor and think of what I'm gonna paint. That's getting pretty black now. And I usually have a napkin in my left hand. Let's see, let's get some. red ink there we go so when I paint with color colored ink I sure don't want to use dirty water to clean my brushes this is called a happy dot brush it's a very versatile brush And the trick is to know how much water and how much ink to load onto your brush. And you want to start with not a real, real wet brush. You hold the brush in an upright manner so you can make a little skinny line or you can press down on it and it'll make a thicker line.
I'm gonna I'm gonna make this green a little darker green. And paint a few leaves around the poinsettia. So where'd you grow up, John? I grew up in South Texas. I'm from Corpus Christi originally. And how'd you end up in Amarillo? Well, I, I got out of high school in 1960 and I had two goals in life. I wanted to be the first in my family to graduate from college and I wanted to become an airborne ranger. And I actually accomplished both those things. Uh, but what happened is I, I went to A&M my first year, so I'm a class of 64, but when I got back home, I got kicked out of my house, and I lived in a boarding house in, in Corpus Christi, Ms. Odom's boarding house for seven months. And one day I read an article in the Corpus Christi Caller Times, the newspaper, and it talked about a man that loaned money to, to go to college at West Texas State University. Well, I had to look at a map to know where Canyon, Texas was. I, <laughs> I drove 676 miles from my home to Canyon and walked in on Mr. Morris, the Opportunity Plan Incorporated, and said, hey, look, here's an article. Will you, will you loan me money? And he said, well, you, if you're willing to work and, you know, there were some things you had to be willing to do. You didn't have to be a scholarship athlete. You didn't have to be... A, a wonderful student. You just had to be willing to work, budget your time and money, and work to work your way through college. So that's what I did. It took me uh, eight years out of high school, but I did uh, graduate from college. And both my little brothers, I have two younger brothers, they both got doctorates. Now they were all on scholarship. I was sort of a party boy until I met my wife. Uh, the summer before my third senior year, which was the summer of 1967. She was the Canyon High School homecoming queen of 1967. And she came walking out of my apartment and I was dumbstruck. I fell in love. I mean, we've, we've been married uh, 48 years now and she hadn't kicked me out yet. So I'm pretty fortunate. Uh, we have one daughter uh, Melissa, and she was she went to Texas A&M, made her daddy proud, but she went four years and graduated magna cum laude in four years. So uh, she is a librarian. In fact, she was the youngest head librarian in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. And she's now a librarian at Amarillo College, but she also teaches two classes in psychology, and she just loves it. She had to, she had a Master of Library Science, but she had to do some extra coursework uh, so she could teach that course at Emerald College, which she did, and she just loves those psychology courses. And she's a very good instructor because we hear reports all the time. In fact, I had a young man come in my gallery the other day and recognize her photograph I had back there and said, hey, I know her. And he had taken her class and was just bragging like crazy about her. She's a, she's a really good person and a good instructor. So that's my, my story. Well, tell us uh, about your art. Well, yeah, my art, how did I start in art? Well, you know, I designed the seal of West Texas State University. So, that was on the diplomas from 1975 until 1993. So I knew I had a little artistic ability, but I just never worked at it. 
So I retired after 35 years in the financial services industry in 2007, and my wife had me in a store and said, look at this little art kit. And I said, honey, I ride mountain bikes, road bikes. I'm an old rock climber. I still play golf. I don't need a hobby. But she said, oh, why don't you buy it anyway? And I did. It was $19.95. And that's what started me. It's this, I have this book right back over here, this book. This is what started me, $19.95. Just a little basic instruction book, Chinese Brush Painting Studio. And this is the first thing I ever tried to paint. with the little brush ink it had in the, in the, in the little box it came in. Oh, neat. <laughs> That's the first thing I ever tried to paint. <laughs> so I just fell in love with it. I, I'm very passionate about it. Uh, you know, but I've been to China and Taiwan both for instruction and there's somebody specific you trained under? In yeah, oh gosh, Xu uh, Bodo in Beijing. He had a beautiful studio behind in a gated community. We don't know where he lives, but that studio was like, it was a quadrangle, four, four buildings, about 3,000 square feet each. And that was just his studio. We don't know where he lives, but he's a well-known artist. He paints gigantic paintings in what's called the Gombe style, which meticulous style. He'll paint on maybe 10 by 15 foot canvas, not canvas, but paper stretched over a frame. And, and he'll paint, like if he paints one hair on a person's head, he might go over it 20 or 30 times, just one hair. Mm. So that's meticulous style. What I'm doing is called uh, chi yi, which just means spontaneous. So I had instruction under him, and he had uh, five other artists that he'd invited. So I got instruction from them also. And it was just a wonderful trip. And then the next year, I went to Taiwan. And, you know, you get to immerse yourself in the culture. And we went to the National Museum in Taipei. And I got to look at objects behind glass that were 5,000 years old. Just amazing. It was a, 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 a wonderful couple of trips. And, and all the time I was getting instruction. We'd have classes. and uh, Some of the art in my galleries is that that I started in both China and Taiwan. Uh, I had to bring it back. I didn't finish it until I brought it back. You see I'm painting on paper. This paper is called Schwen, S-H-U-E-N, Schwen paper. And it's, you know, it's very thin and it, it accepts the ink uh, very well. You have to learn, you know, as I said, you have to learn how much water and ink to put on your brush or it'll bleed. Where do you get your inspiration for what you're going to paint next? Oh, I can get it out of books or out of my head. I just, a lot of things I just get out of my head. Uh, this particular, uh, this is a poinsettia, believe it or not, it's a poinsettia. Well, I got this off the internet. I just looked up poinsettia on the internet and then drew it and and this is my drawing of a, of a poinsettia. I hope it looks like a poinsettia to you. I'm gonna title it poinsettia so people know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to title my painting, so this one's to be titled poinsettia. All right, we've got some blue-green leaves now and the middle of the flower, reddish. 
and I'm going to outline it now with my black ink that I ground. Is there a purpose to your artwork? Well, the purpose of my gallery and my my studio is that it is so very therapeutic for me. I have post-traumatic stress disorder from combat in Vietnam a long time ago. And this is such a, I mean, all art is therapeutic, but particularly my ancient, uh, even spiritual art form, you know, it's, it's very old and I try to be as authentic as possible, even though I'm a native Texan, I try to, maintain the aspects of Chinese brush painting as best I can, which is why I grind my ink. You know, I've got bottled ink. It's, the bottled ink today is very good, but I only use bottled ink when I do calligraphy, the writing. And uh, I have a uh, Chinese friend out here so I decided I'd try to learn a little Mandarin, so I'll, her name is Tong. And I'll go to Tong and I'll say, Tong, Dwebichi, Xinwon, Nikwe Shopu, Tangwama. And she says, John, you got the worst accent I've ever heard. So I decided I'm too old to try to learn one of the most difficult languages in the world. I'll just try to, I'll just try to better my strokes and try to become a, as good an artist as I can without trying to learn the language. That's sort of a tough language anyway. So, Mandarin with a Texas accent. Yeah, I know, that's what she said. She, she's a real nice lady. And she was actually born in China. You know, she's really Chinese. It isn't like, I mean, she, she's, she knows the language. And, but it's real funny, she, she has a gallery out here and, and she does origami and paper cuts. She doesn't paint. Yeah. But she says, I'm the artist. Oh yeah, she's a wonderful lady. Tom Steinley. We started out here together. We had a, a big gallery facing north, facing Plains Boulevard. And she finally got a chance to have her own gallery down here. So now she has her gallery and I have my gallery. And it's pretty neat. But she's a friend, she's a wonderful lady. Tell us about how you feel while you're painting. Oh, I just feel more relaxed. I, I, I mean, I have to try to concentrate on what I'm doing, but I, it just just makes me feel great. I, I'm, I'm just, I just love what I do. And I want to do it the best I can. And you know, I'll never be as good as a Chinese artist, but, but I'm gonna be as good as, I'm, I'm gonna be the best in the Panhandle of Texas. <laughs> so what are some of the difficulties that you have faced as an artist? Well, I don't, I haven't had any, I don't, I don't know that I've had any difficulties, really. <laughs> I, you know, questions. I guess, I guess paying for those trips to China and Taiwan, they were artist only trips, so I owe my wife two major excursions. Which will, you got married in Hawaii, did you not? No, I got engaged in Hawaii, but I got married 12 days after I got back from Vietnam. Okay. So when a lot of people came back from Vietnam and I got spat at, cursed and all that, well, I got off the airplane and there was my future wife and her family greeting me. And then I got married 12 days later and then we went right off to Dahlonega, Georgia, where I taught ranger school for the next two and a half years. So that little town, Dahlonega, up in the mountains of northern Georgia, they depended on us. We were their, their were livelihood, and they clog dance in the square. It was really something. That little, <laughs> that little town, Dahlonega, 
and they, that's still where the Mountain Phaser Ranger School is. So that's what I did when I got back, top ranger school. So, you know, I don't really have any problems at paying for all this stuff. I, you know, I can, I can get away with a lot less than I pay for, I think. I, I have every brush you can imagine, and, and, uh, and they're all Chinese brushes. They're not from Hobby Lobby. How has your work developed throughout the years? Well, I think from comments I've gotten better. I've heard people say, John, you've improved, especially some of the other artists out here, like Amin Abasov down there. And I mean, he, he'll compliment me, and boy, when you, it comes from a master artist like him, that means something to me. So, but a lot of times they want me to change. They want me to do acrylics or oils I'm not going to. I'm going to try to get better at what I do. Yeah. I'm just trying to convince the people of the Panhandle that in addition to cowboys, Indians, windmills, stock tanks, cattle herds, and feedlots, there's another art form available, <laughs> Chinese brush painting. So I'm not going to change. I'm just going to, you know, people in China, they can work all their lives just on a couple of sayings or a couple of strokes or a couple of flowers and they'd work all their lives on doing that so I've got a long way to go I can improve and that's all I'm trying to do is improve as I go okay this is about done now now I'll put what's what's called a chop a chop is a, a carved stone that has a saying or a name on it. So I'm going to put my name at the bottom of this painting. So when I, when I, uh, this carved, this carved stone chop, you know, I can't use ink. It, it'll smear. So I have something called cinnabar paste. This is a paste. made out of cinnabar chemical. And what I do is I press it down in here and get it loaded with red ink, or this red cinnabar paste. And then I always give it the breath of life. And then I press it down on the paper. And hopefully it'll leave a good impression of this chop that says Shining Sword Studio which is the name of the gallery we sit in right now. Now there it is. Not perfect, but it's, that's it. Pretty cool. And then I'll write my name here too. My, my Chinese name is Yue Han. It just means John, but write my name down here.
Now also, I, I sneak my real name on, on, on my painting somewhere. I'll, I don't make it real bold, but I'll sneak my real name in here somewhere. So that's it. And then we'll call it poinsettia. So now this, it's really, the painting's over, but it's really not over because the next thing I have to do is wet mount it, which means I, I put another piece of paper pasted to the back of it to give it more consistency. So you see this is sort of thin. Here's one that's wet mounted. This is a black Chinese grass orchid. And you'll see it has another piece of paper that I glued to the back of the original. This, this is the original right here. And then I glued another piece of paper to the back of it. So I have a mirror in the back and I'll, I'll lay it down flat and then put paste on it and then put another piece of paper on top of it and rub it down and let it, let it dry. And that's, that's called wet mounting. And it, it gives it more consistency and lets it last a lot longer. So this, this painting will be done the same way after it dries real well. It has to really be dry, and then I'll take it into the back where I have a mirror that I use to, because it's real flat and hard, and that's what I use to do my wet mounting on. So just because I finished a painting, it's really not finished until I do that Still wet mounting. Still got the mounting Still got the mounting. And then, then I, if I want to frame it, I have to I do my own frame and I, I'll have to cut the mat board and put it in a frame and that's what I'll do.